Hello, I'm Dr. Randall Gates, a board certified chiropractic neurologist, also a chiropractic physician at Gateswood Health. We're located in Henderson, Nevada, which is basically Las Vegas. Now today I'm talking about anxiety, and I treat a lot of patients with anxiety, and many of the patients that I'm seeing who have anxiety don't want to be on the medications or they don't want to take the medications long term for their condition. And they feel there's a lot of stigma surrounding their anxiety, and it's something that they really don't like, they want to be able to shut off these rampant thoughts, but they're not able to, and that may apply to you. So a lot of anxiety patients are looking for natural solutions out there, different supplements to take. In my experience, it's not necessarily that simple. Frequently, we have to look at what areas of the brain are functioning correctly and what areas of the brain are not functioning correctly, because frequently with anxiety, the frontal lobes may not be shutting off your fear center as well as we would like it to. But the association between anxiety and depression has long been established. It's all throughout the literature that if somebody has depression, they're not responding to medications, that their doctor should really investigate their thyroid and see if they need thyroid hormones. Or they should investigate them for having something called Hashimoto's, which is where the immune system attacks the thyroid. And I have plenty of videos on Hashimoto's. You can go look at that on our YouTube channel or website. But as it pertains to you as the anxiety sufferer, this new article came out in the journal Depression and Anxiety. 2018, it's brand new, where they were surveying all these different studies, comparing and contrasting the relationship between anxiety and thyroid dysfunction. They found unequivocally that if you have anxiety, you really need to have your thyroid checked. You need to have your thyroid checked from a subclinical hypothyroidism perspective. And your doctors also have to consider that your brain's communication to the thyroid may also not be correct because when we're chronically anxious, the pituitary gland, our master control gland that controls all of our hormones, can actually change the way it's sending hormonal signals to our adrenal glands, and even the thyroid can be affected in that too. So this is highly, highly, highly important data. If subclinical hypothyroidism is a new term to you, then basically, in general, understand it this way. Most doctors are trained to treat you when your thyroid dysfunction is either really high or really low. And researchers have said, for a while that there's a gray area, so to speak, which many of you may fall into, where you're not completely low yet in terms of your thyroid function, but it is there. And so that gray area is called subclinical hypothyroidism. And for you as the anxiety sufferer, if you have a, a blood test called a TSH, that's your thyroid stimulating hormone test, which is inversely related to your thyroid function. So if TSH is high, it means your thyroid is low that if your TSH is above 3.7, some articles are now saying 2.5 for pregnant females, but if it's above 3.7, then that can be an absolute issue for you that you have to pay attention to, because if you don't have the right thyroid hormones, your brain isn't gonna get the right cellular energy to shut off the fear-based responses. Also, we have to consider that if you do have a thyroid issue that is subclinical hypothyroidism, then you need to consider that you have probably about an 80% chance that your immune system is attacking your thyroid in that scenario. And if your immune system is attacking your thyroid, then the question is, why is that happening? And usually that's because there are food reactions occurring in the gastrointestinal tract. I just read an article out of the World Journal of Gastroenterology looking at gluten reactions with thyroid, and they found that this, this relationship is extremely solid. And then also, uh, we have to consider that other factors with the immune system may be at play with Hashimoto's, which can be changes in gut bacteria, viral infections in the thyroid gland itself, genetic predispositions for viral infections to populate the thyroid gland. All these factors have to be assessed. So if this is of something of interest to you, uh, I, the number should be at the bottom of the screen, and you can call that number if you have questions relative to your particular case. But I do appreciate you watching. I hope this was helpful. Send us your comments, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll see you later.